live on, on Facebook. Um, we're about to start our mold podcast just in time for a spooky season. Let me angle that down. And we're okay. from a different angle today because nothing in the world is working right now. Yep. No technology yep. that we have is working right now. You'll notice Isis and I are wearing our cat ears for spooky season. We are ready to go. We're going to start with a news broadcast um, I'm from Tarrant County. County. So actually, it is very Texas appropriate. Yes, yes, in um, Texas. So let's go ahead and get started. Already. Well, certainly the Fox 5 IT wants to know how a newly renovated Fayette County home could have massive amounts of mold and termite damage hidden behind the new drywall. Yeah, yeah, the new owner's paid a home inspector before they closed on the house. The Fox 5 IT team reported when she tries to says this sort of damage is nearly impossible to find. Huh? I think it still smelled this house in the way. It was terrible. You would have to pull off pieces of the wall sure. to touch the problem to pull off pieces of the wall. So how did all those demons get there? House. And did so anyone know before they sold the house? And did anyone know before they sold the house to this frustrated family? Want a hamburger? Want a hamburger? Another Fine. busy morning Another in this busy morning in this Fayette County home. Even more hectic even more than they realize their home, their home sits, in the sits in the driveway of the house, of the house they, they actually bought. Actually bought. So every morning so we get up in an RV and look out the window at the house where you want to sleep. It, it breaks my heart. They say it's not just that they can't sleep here, they can barely walk through the front door without doing this. You have a professional time, don't you? Oh, yes. Oh, I can smell it. Did it smell this bad when you moved in? No. no. When Shelly and David Hoppaw bought this Savoy house in May, it looked like this. The listing gushed with attractive details. This beautiful home has just been renovated. Brand new paint, new floors, new fixtures, new countertops. Then David decided to replace the kitchen cabinets because they were too dark for show. That decision would reveal the truth. When my husband took it off, it just was hideous. It was terrible. Mold hidden by a piece of plywood stained to match the cabinets. Then, during the process of taking the cabinets out, the linoleum ripped. So they decided to replace the kitchen floor. More mold underneath. And it smelled wet. Um, just like something had died <laughs> in, in our house. I mean, it was just bad. And it just kept getting stronger and stronger. They tore off some of the drywall. More mold. More mold. Um, like more mold. I love that newscasters like mold. I know. That's, That's so scary, scary though. If I bought a house and discovered that. I would be so upset. <laughs> so it's actually really good they did that because they could have had some really, really serious, frightening health issues from that house if they hadn't done that renovation. For sure. So For actually, sure. in a way, they're lucky. Yeah. Um, we cut it off, but that house also had massive termite damage. We'll yeah. talk about that later in the news tab. So that really was just lipstick on a pig. That For sure. They just really just covered, covered everything up and left it. I yeah, think. that flipper really did them dirty. You really did. That's like... So, so horrible. horrible. I, I don't know how anybody can have the conscience to do that to somebody. Yeah, it's pretty dark. And the worst part is they're living in an RV on their driveway. I know. So I just, I know. I can't imagine just like being excited for a house and then bam. Which is a horror story, isn't it? It, it is. is. It, it really is. is. Which is the perfect segue into this episode on the wall. Which, by the way, if you're listening to this in real time, is our spooky season episode. Our official yes. spooky season episode on mold. Isis and I are wearing our cat ears. Yep. Yep. Isis has her scream nails. I know. I got some scream from. She actually has ghost face on her nails. Amazing. Yeah, they're pretty nice. <laughs> and I'm jealous. I'm actually really jealous. So I should be jealous, right? Very cool. But let's get to the important things. Before we get into the spooky season episode, I need to ask you a few questions. Okay. Have, have you, you seen? seen <laughs> have, have you seen, seen Halloween? Yes. Have you seen Friday the Thirteenth? Yes. yes. The original one. Yes. yes. Where uh, this is not a spoiler alert, people. This movie's been out for like yeah. Okay. Years, like, if you haven't years, seen it, then it's on you. Where the mom's the killer. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've seen it. You've yeah. seen the first one. Okay, fantastic. Have you seen um, Nightmare on Elm Street? Yes. The one with Johnny Depp. I think so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, I think I actually think you're ready for all my references. Oh, okay, yes. awesome. <laughs> yeah. But first, hi, I'm Mary, and I'm Lucy, and we're the homegirls. Today we're talking about mold. Mold is the perfect topic for spooky season, as I mentioned, because there is nothing more frightening than finding mold in your house, just like that unfortunate couple yeah, in no. the intro. You do not want to find, find mold in your house. Like, you really do not. No, no. Like, all good serial killers, mold has killed, and mold will kill again. Yes, yes it, is. It, is, it is out there. Yes. Yes. Mold is the Michael Myers specter that you think you've killed, but somehow it keeps getting back up. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Camp Crystal Lake is probably full of mold. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the people of Houston don't know it yet, but something is coming for them in their dreams. Oh my God, yeah. It's mold. It's mold. It's mold. It's mold. <laughs> mold never sleeps. Mold is determined, and mold will never stop hunting you. Did you know that mold species is neither vegetable, mineral, nor animal? What? What the heck? So what is it? Is it? No, it's not. <laughs> it's a fun guy. Okay, okay. That, makes that makes sense. But there's, but there's nothing, nothing fun, fun about it. About it. Heck no. <laughs> there really is. No, there, there is, is not. not. So let's so delve into, into the dark, dark story of mold. mold. Yes, let's do it. First, I want to talk about fun guys. Fun guys in general. There are some good fun guys. Mushrooms are fun guys. Yeah, they are. They are. I mean, there's some good ones. But there's a lot of really scary ones, um, and mold is just one of many types of very frightening fun guys. Have you ever heard of um, ergot? I don't think so. So in the Middle Ages, there used to be a disease called St. Anthony's Fire, and essentially the person, the victim, would come, come down with these shooting, flaming pains that they felt like their extremities were on fire. It can make you crazy. It can make you have uncontrollable movements. And ultimately, you die. Oh, my God. And they didn't know what was causing this disease. That's why they call it St. Anthony's fire. Because St. Anthony, I believe, was burned to death. Feel free. If anyone's listening to the music Catholic, feel free to correct me on that one. Oh, my God. But that's why they call it St. Anthony's fire. Because the idea was you were experiencing the agony of the saint. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> yes. We know now. We did not know this then. We know now because of science. science that what was actually giving them St. Anthony's fire was a fungus called ergot. Okay. Or ergot. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it. Um, but I know what it is because I was a history major. The, you know, I, gotta, I always got to throw that one in there, right? Um, essentially, it's a fungus that thrives on God. So rye? these European peasants were making, they basically lived off of bread. You know? Oh, okay, like rye bread, okay. Yeah, because they were poor. And like rye was the main means of making bread. They were not um, realizing that their rye had a fungus on it. And this <gasps> fungus was ergot. And basically it's an acid, a lysergic oh, acid, acid. Um, which ultimately went to, to on, on to become LSD. LSD. Oh. In, the most, in its most like pared down form, it's LSD, but in it, its raw form, raw if you're eating it, 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 it bread, you get St. Anthony's fire. That, that is, is so, so crazy. crazy. Yes. I have no idea. But it gets even scarier. Oh my God. They say the dancing plague of 1518 and Strasbourg's all states was caused by air poisoning. And let me tell you about the dancing plague. Okay, yeah, please, yes. One morning, it started with one victim. Down. This lady woke up and she couldn't stop moving. And these, and these movements, movements imitated dancing. Like her like feet her were tapping and her arms, arms were moving. Oh my God. This isn't like a rave here. Maybe it yeah. looks yeah. like a rave though, because that's kind of what you do in a rave. Okay. But people were like convulsing, but not seizure convulsing. They looked like they were dancing. What the? Ultimately, the entire town came down with this. And what, and what people, people would do is they would dance and dance and dance and dance and get so exhausted that they would sleep. sleep. And then when they came out of the sleep, they start dancing again. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. So they call it the dancing flag. Um, um, ultimately, ultimately it passed, passed. And we know now it probably passed because the fungus, fungus probably, probably, you know, you know, went away. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, um, but a lot of people died. Because really, they did that's really, really crazy. Wow. Wow. That is I don't, know, I, don't I don't know. I don't know if that's a good way to die. <laughs> I want to add that air gets it only grows when it's a really rainy season. So if okay. it was a dry okay. summer, you would have the problem with air gets poisoning. If it was a more rainy summer, you would get the, um, the 
fungus. Okay, okay so, so it's probably like, like rain and stuff, stuff during the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It gets even scarier. Oh, have oh. you heard of the Salem witch trials? Yes. yes, of course. Yes, Salem witch trials. Um, very, very. If you don't know what this is, I know. I mean, this. we read so we read books about this. You're not in an American school. if you okay. don't know what the Salem witch trials are. Okay. What is I that? said that. Isn't does it? What is that one? Like play? Is it the Crucible? Yeah, yes, the okay. Crucible. It's the Crucible. Yeah. Oh, okay. We know the writers in the Crucible too. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. We all had to read that book, man. <laughs> yeah, everyone had to read the Crucible it out in class. Yes. You know? Um, I saw Goody So and So with the Devil. You know that mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. They think there are a lot of academics who think the Salem witch trials, the visions and seizures these girls were having, was from arrogant poisoning. Oh my God! Yeah. It's never been proven, but the symptoms they had, the seeing things, the convulsions, the very very similar to symptoms of arrogant poisoning. Wow. And ultimately, it is decided, it is universally acknowledged now that the girls made the whole thing up. But the question is, did they make it up because they were sick, or did they make it up because they were malicious? Yeah. And there's actually a lot of proof for both sides. So the Salem witch trial thing is kind of like not a confirmed case, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's but that's a really, really interesting theory. theory. Like, I, would I would have never thought that. that. The whole, the whole thing, thing was crazy. Was crazy honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It gets even scarier. Oh, oh, my, oh God. my God. We're back in Europe, France, France. 1951. 1951. All right. In 48 hours, 230 villagers suddenly became violently ill in this, in this town of, um, small town in France. Okay. Okay. And for some reason, the name of the town is not popping up, but let oh, okay. me. Let me describe what happened to these people. This is 1951, so not too long ago. Yeah, no, yeah, no that's definitely. So they, it happened after they were eating bread, and people thought they were getting food poisoning from the bread. Because initially, okay. people started to vomit and have insomnia, which is, you know, kind of a common cause. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You wouldn't think like something bad, bad about. Exactly. Bad, yeah. Eventually, the victims started experiencing wild hallucinations, convulsive convulsions, swollen limbs, and sometimes those limbs turn gangrenous. And the victims described a feeling of their limbs burning. Oh, God. Mayor Alvera Hobart told the United Press at the time, I have seen healthy men and women suddenly become terrorized, ripping their bed sheets, hiding themselves underneath their blankets to escape the hallucinations. People leaped from their windows to escape the hallucinations. Oh my God. Some people thought they were being eaten by tigers. Other people saw, said they saw they grinning saw skulls. skulls. Um, one villager, Gabriel Veladeux, screamed, I am dead and my head is made of copper and I have snakes in my stomach and they are burning me before he attempted to commit suicide by throwing himself in the river. That is so crazy. So crazy. Yes. What the? In this in case, case, five people ended up dying. Okay. Okay. Wow. And that was, that was all, all because of arrogant poisoning. Oh, oh my god. god. This this is some so bad stuff. This is uh, I told you it was a good spooky season. Oh my god, that's so outrageous. So now we're gonna go really back in time. Okay, cool. And now we're gonna talk about mold specifically. So okay. arrogant is a form of fungus. Now we're gonna move to the particular fungus we're gonna chat about in this podcast, which is mold. Okay. So in the Old Testament, Leviticus chapter 14, there's actually written the first mold remediation protocol in the Bible. It's what? in the Bible. People. What is it? Oh my God. Yes. So this takes place in, um, you all know, you know the story of Moses, right? Moses, right? This yeah. takes place yeah. in the story of Moses, Moses. Moses. you know, okay. um, Prince of Egypt. You've seen Prince of Egypt, right? I think, I think so. so. Oh, good Lord. I, I, I can't, can't remember. Come on, that soundtrack absolutely slaps. Oh. Yeah. You need to wait, I need to wait. Let me Google this. Yes. You know, yeah. like I'm not gonna sing it because I can't sing, but that song like oh, oh, I've, seen I've seen it. I've seen it. Yes. Okay, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I've seen yeah. it. You've seen Prince of Egypt. Okay. So this takes place right out of Prince of Egypt, Moses and Aaron are leading the Jews to the promised land. Okay. And the Lord says to Moses, this is an exact quote from the Lord. The Lord. Okay. <laughs> the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when you enter the land of Cana, which I am giving you as your possession, and I put a spreading mold in a house in that land, the owner of the house must go and tell the priest, I have seen something that looks like a defiling mold in my house. 
the priest is to order the house to be empty before he goes into the mold, so that nothing in the house will be pronounced unclean. After this, the priest is to go in and inspect the house. If the mold, if the mold has spread on the wall, the, wall, the priest is to order that, that, contaminated, that the contaminated that stones, stones be thrown out and thrown into, into an unclean place outside of town. He must have he must all the inside walls of the house and the material, and the material that is scraped off dumped into, dumped into an unclean place outside of town. Then they are to take other stones to replace these and take new clay and plaster the house. If the defiling mold reappears in the house after the stones have been torn out, and the house is scraped and plastered, the priest is to go and examine it. And if the mold is spread in the house, it is a persistent defiling mold. The house is unclean. It must be torn down, its stones, timber, and all the plaster, and taken out of the town to an unclean place. The wow. Lord ain't playing around. I, they had the priest going to fix this. this is so, so this is really interesting because really when we get to my second, second section, when I talk about mold remediation protocol, protocol this, this is, is almost, almost identical, identical to the actual mold remediation protocol that exists today. Wow, wow. That that's so, so crazy. crazy. I know. They were talking about this in the Bible. The, it's Bible. Bible. Wow. The Bible, the Bible had the solution. Yes, it is Bible. <laughs> So now we're gonna jump forward into the 1920s. Okay, not right now in Ukraine. Okay. In the 1920s in Ukraine, a mysterious illness began to affect their horses. Oh. The horses started to get irritation of the nose, throat, and mouth, excessive bleeding, nervous system problems, and sometimes death. Two decades later, this lasted from the 1920s to the 1930s, thousands of horses had died in Ukraine. And the Russians are finally like, what is going on? And they sent scientists to identify what was killing in the past 40, they waited 40 years. They waited, oh my God, those poor horses. I know, they're just like, this, like, is, this is fine. Yeah, this is fine. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is fine. So after 20 years, the Russians were like, okay, we're done with this. We got to figure out what's killing these Ukrainian horses. So they sent a bunch of scientists and it turns out the horses had been eating moldy feed. Oh my God. Yes. So it ended up that what they were eating was what we call the statue botrys. You know what the statue botrys is. I do. You're going to talk about the statue botrys. Yes, I am. But oh my God, they were really feeding these horses moldy food and they didn't notice for yeah. 40 years. And statue botrys is very, very noticeable. Yeah, yeah it's, it's literally... literally like, like black, black right? yes. <laughs> which is good that you said that because statue botrys is black mold people okay yeah yeah it is the black mold that everyone is so terrified of but for the remainder of this episode we are not going to call it statue botrys we'll be calling it the statue boy the statue boy the statue yeah. boy the statue boy so it eventually like they they call it the statue bot the statue boy basically the russians are the ones that made it statue boy okay but it wasn't until 30 years later. So, so now we're in the 1940s. 30 years later, they actually yeah. identified a toxin in the statue boy that hurts people. It's called trichothysaline serotoxin, and it's a fungal, it's a fungal toxin, okay. also known as mycotoxin. Wow. Yeah, I know. So this gets even creepier. The reasons the Russians sent um scientists over to examine these horses it's because since, since the 1900s 1900, almost 100,000 people in Russia had died from a mysterious disease they couldn't figure out what it was and it was similar to how the horses were dying wow so that's why the Russians sent scientists to Ukraine to figure out what was happening okay um the disease they called it in Russia alimentary toxic aculea but it turns out it was a um, disease basically when they consumed any type of grain with a mold in it. It okay. was what was killing these people. So it wasn't a statue boy mold, mold, but the, the symptoms, symptoms were similar, similar to what okay. was happening to the horses. Yeah. So that's why they investigated it. They, they also saw that they could have been a the mold related deaths in, in grains. Okay. okay. So everybody was basically eating mold. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh my God. I know. So um, now in the United, United States. 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 Oh, okay. Here we go. Yeah. It is now, <laughs> we're, we're, I know we're jumping around in time. I'm so sorry. 
But, but so, so we were in we Ukraine, were in, yeah. then we were then in we Russia, Russia, then we were in Japan, Japan and, and earlier we were, we were in France. Yes. Yeah. And, and then, now, now we're in the United US. States. It's, it's 1945. 1945. Remember with the baby boom, um, after the first world war, they start having to build houses really quick. Right? Yes. yes. And, and part, part of that, that was um, using a gypsum wallboard that quickly supplanted plaster as a building material. So um, this early gypsum wall board that they used right, right, right in the beginning, beginning of the baby, baby boom, the baby boom to start building these houses, houses was, was um, compressed, compressed between, between two layers of paper, of building paper. paper. And, and as it, it turns out, what the building paper and the mixture of gypsum they were using ended up absorbing water. Uh, and that water absorption led to mold growth. And the mold was growing very fast. And within, within 24 to 48 hours, hours of the water exposure. Oh, oh my yeah. god. So, so these, these boards basically, basically they got wet, wet and like literally like two days later, so the mold is already it's growing. Exactly. So people started getting mold growing in their house and weird childhood illnesses started happening. Oh, oh so okay. this is a yeah. baby, baby boom. boom. So, so the kids are getting sick. sick. The kids okay. are getting sick. sick. Sore throats, <laughs> asthma. Well, you know, allergy symptoms, right? Yeah. Uh, but then there were some worse symptoms that were happening. Oh, oh God. I, I know. And um, they started noticing that babies were hemorrhaging. <gasps> yeah. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So there so actually were, were, there were a, a few outbreaks, outbreaks of this weird, weird disease. disease. Just, Just like, like the Russian and Ukrainian. There, there, there were a few outbreaks of this weird disease. disease. It, happened it happened in the 70s. 70s. And, the and the most, most um, major, major one, the turning point episode, episode actually happened in 1994. Oh, my God. That's two years before I was born. I'm not going to tell you how you were born. So, so basically, basically this mold this problem starts, starts in 1945 and it's not until 1994 that they're actually able to isolate it that it was mold making like causing the child. Oh my god, that took too long. I know. Yeah. Too long. So, so here we go. This is what happened. In 1994, okay. a major rain caused flooding on the east side of Cleveland. It was an area with a large swath of dilapidated buildings, meaning these buildings were from the 40s. Okay. And 50s, which means they had that gypsum, you know. Uh, walls. Yeah. Three months later, so three months after the flood, parents began coming in with infants, limp, blue, and bleeding from their lungs. Oh my god. And guess what they found in the walls? Mold. A statue boy. A boy. They found oh, wow. statue boys oh. in the walls. Oh, oh my, my god. god. So from 1945 to 1994, people living in old homes with that old gypsum plywood were inhaling the statue boys. That's horrible. I know. I, I just want to say I'm so glad that I am living in this time of technology. And <laughs> but it's not perfect. Yeah, it's still yeah, 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 it still happens. Which we'll talk about. Yeah, we, yeah, will, talk we will talk about it. We will talk about it. But oh my god, <laughs> they really went through it. Oh, yeah, yeah. With the statue, statue boys. Yeah, so, but you know what? I want to say this for mold. mold. I don't want to be all down on mold. Okay. Okay. Mold isn't all bad. We get penicillin from mold. You know, penicillin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Although I'm allergic to penicillin. Uh, some beers are made from mold. Oh. Some wines. Uh, blue cheese is a mold. Okay. Okay. Soy sauce actually the fer comes from a ferment. All right. All right. And okay. so does rice wine vinegar. Wow. wow. Yeah. I didn't know that at all. So, okay, mold kind of messed so us up, but hey, yeah. give us some things back. Mold can okay. be both good and bad. <laughs> I, so I don't want to go to, like, like I said, I don't want to be hitting the mold, you know, showing you just the bad side of the mold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, 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 there's some upside. upside. There's some upside. A lot of downsides. Lots of downsides. But, but there are so, some upsides. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm going to pass it over to you. I'm going to hear more about these. Statue boys. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the statue boys. Statue boys. Also known as black, black, black mold, but we're, but we're not calling it that. We're calling it statue boys. So, so statue so boys can release spores as it feeds on organic, organic materials and common household materials like drywall, carpet, insulation, or subflooring that has been exposed to moisture. So, like Mary said, like the panels they got wet, they ended up 
So these spores, if they're ingested or inhaled, can cause a range of unpleasant and as we know, even dangerous symptoms. In particularly severe cases of prolonged exposure, statuary effects can be more dangerous, often compounded by allergic reactions to black mold spores, sorry, statuary spores. These symptoms can include nausea, vomiting, and bleeding in the lungs and nose. That is, that is horrible. horrible. Yes, we, yeah, that makes that all those symptoms that people were describing, it all fits the statue boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And statue boys can, can be very costly, costly to remove. And the exposure and poisoning can cause a wide range of health problems. And some of them are very severe. So understanding the symptoms and health effects can help you and your family identify these indicators and take swift action to protect your health and your home. Me and, Me and my family, family when, when I was in high school, we actually lived in a house that ended up having mold. I don't know if it was, were they statue boys? I don't know if it was statue boys. I don't know exactly what, what it was. But what happened was, in my room, right next to my room was a, like the water heater. And the, this water heater was leaking into the carpet. So my carpet was constantly wet. Like, yeah, I'd walk over there, like, my carpet's wet. I'm like, oh, what the heck is going on? My carpet's wet. And I ended up getting sick. sick. I ended up like, like having really bad like, like, throat like, problems, problems, like, like to the point where like it was so like it was so painful, painful to like, like swallow, swallow my, my life. Oh my life. god, that's terrifying! And it, 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 it ended up being mold. mold, and we moved. <laughs> so, so I'm glad you brought that up because I'm actually going to talk about what rights tenants have as far as mold. Oh, okay, like, oh, okay. like yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay. I'm actually glad you brought up that story, but it's I hope it wasn't a statue boy. Yeah, I hope it wasn't. Yeah, I hope it wasn't. Thankfully, I'm okay thankfully, now. I'm I actually, okay now. I actually had to get my tonsils removed. Oh, is that why you're not here? Yeah, because I kept yeah, being sick after that. I kept being sick after that. I just kept being sick in my throat. Like, like, at least more than three times That's terrifying. So yeah, so, so obviously, yeah. So, obviously, black mold can really, black mold can really so, so statue boys is most likely to appear in areas of the home that are particularly warm, warm and damp. Humid and damp. So basements or so cross spaces, that, cross spaces have that may have leaks or other sources, or other sources of moisture are often, moisture susceptible, are often susceptible to, to the statue boy growth. And they are also very identifiable by its color. It's black. Statue boy is black. So you know, other molds are usually like green or gray. But statue boys, they're black. They're like dark black. Like you, you will know. Yeah. You will know that it is statue boy. And like I said earlier, they can cause an array of allergic reactions and health problems. And in most cases, it also depends like on how long you were exposed and like how much spores you actually like inhaled. Mm -hmm. And like more symptoms could be like chronic fatigue, headaches, fever, irritation to the eyes, mucous membranes of the mouth, yeah. nose, and throat. Sneezing, rashes, and chronic coughing. So there's a lot of symptoms. So actually, I want to stop you there. You lived here during Harvey, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you lost your car. Did you get sick afterwards? I don't remember. I don't think I did, but I know people did get sick. I got so sick afterwards. I had like flu symptoms. I had aches. I had headache. I kept going to bed sick, waking up feeling even worse. And eventually, NPR like Houston Matters had a thing yes. that said it was mold poisoning. The whole city had mold poisoning because of Hurricane Harvey and everyone had to rip out their, like, their insides of their yeah. houses. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. do you remember the junk just being piled up? Mm -hmm. It was all just outside, outside your house. Anywhere, anywhere, anywhere you went, you saw junk, junk, junk everywhere. Junk. And I think they ended up removing, like, Five trillion tons of garbage, or something like there that. There was so, so much, much, like so much. You wouldn't pass the corner without, without seeing something. Like. And this and junk was so high, high, it was over it was your car. Like, like you and you drove. Yes. yes. You like drove through a tunnel of junk. This, this junk was, was organic material. We'll talk more about organic material and mold in a second. But this junk was basically because it was organic it was wood and it was insulation and it was paper yeah, yeah. it was it ended up being full of mold because harvey lasted five days yeah and i mean it makes sense it was just sitting in water, water. and it took, and it a, took while, a while for the water to go down, down. five too. days of heat and humidity and rain yes, yes. and so exactly. when they ripped it out the whole city was full of mold for over a month yeah. And people were sick for a really, really, really long time. Yeah. yeah. And that's terrifying. That, that is, is terrifying. terrifying. 
hurricanes can, can break molds. Yeah. <laughs> like, Jesus. Jesus. What, what is it happening here? <laughs> <laughs> that is the universal <laughs> question. Yes. And, and so, so in, in like cases, cases of prolonged or severe exposure, um, there are more extreme symptoms and that's like nausea, vomiting, and you know, bleeding in your lungs. And in your nose. Yeah, that's really freaky. But actually, I want to add that most of the time that hemorrhaging only happens in babies because they don't have the immune system. Yeah, for sure. To fight it. For sure. Maybe if you were had like, um, what is that disease in the lungs where your lung fills up with mucus? Um, cystic fibrosis. Oh, cystic fibrosis. Oh. Yeah, maybe if you had yeah, cystic yeah, yeah. fibrosis or asthma, you might yeah. have. Yeah. I'm sure if you like already have like some kind of underlying condition, it, it would affect you worse. Yeah, like, you would probably, probably have extreme. But it's symptoms. usually babies. That then that's why in 1994 they have yeah. that yeah. episode with the babies coming in, uh, um, limp and blue with bleeding in their lungs. Oh my, oh my god, god, that's, that's terrifying. terrifying. I know. I know. It's, it's babies. babies. Like, like what the. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of them, but I'm, yeah. I don't want them dead or anything. Yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's somebody's, somebody's child. Like, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like, that's, that's their world right there. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, I mean, you don't mess around with a statue boy. No, no you, you don't. don't. Like, if you, oh, like, if you have, if you can, like, spot, spot something that you, that you think might, might be mold, mold, any, any kind of mold, mold honestly, it doesn't have to just be a statue boy. You, you should call somebody. somebody. Yeah. You should definitely call somebody. You, you don't want to keep it there and just keep it nailed or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. You you gotta check out Leviticus chapter 14, the good board will tell you how to Yeah. Do <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, so, so to guard, guard against the health risks associated, associated with black mold, mold statue boys, preventing and controlling the growth in the home is the best defense. So treating areas of is it sorry, I don't know what happened. And if you're doing this, you should wear like a mask, a respirator, like you should not be inhaling it. And if anything, call a professional. Don't try to get rid of it yourself because you might not and it will just grow even more. Yeah, there there are ways to get rid of it, but the fact is mold is smart. So oftentimes it's growing behind things. Yeah, exactly. So when you see mold in a cabinet or something, you should assume that the mold is everywhere in that cabinet. No, yeah, not it's just where you can yeah, see it. It's probably deep in there, like not just one layer, like, yeah. 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 And we're going to talk about why in my section, like why mold is hiding like that. Yeah. So yeah, in conclusion, you know, statue voice can cause health problems and damage, and damage to, homes, to homes, but, but understanding how to prevent, identify, and eradicate it will give you the tools you need to keep your home free of it. So have you ever heard of the song, um, I don't remember the name, the full tank name of the song but like um the beastie boys song you gotta fight for your right to party oh yeah yeah, yeah. 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 every time i hear statue boy they think of that line it's like we're the beastie boy but in my head it's like we're the statue boy yeah that was terrible i'm sorry but that's what happens every time i hear statue boy oh my god so um okay cool back over to me yes yes back over to me oh i was also reading like people were saying there's like a lot of uh myths and, and stuff about mold yeah there are actually yeah you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going, going to, to address that, that. Okay. okay cool 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 because um there is this assumption and we kind of actually bought into it in this episode yeah, yeah. The statue yeah. boy is the worst yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly what i was yeah, yeah. And, um, and um well i don't know if that's actually ever the, always the case yeah, yeah. so all right yeah. Let's, let's let's jump into it let's, let's do it so mold as we said is a fun guy it is found it's indoors and outdoors. And, outdoors. and here's the thing, as I said in my introduction, introduction mold, mold will never stop hunting, hunting you. And that's because mold is everywhere. It's yeah. in every single thing. It's in every particle of the air. That's, that's so crazy. crazy. Isn't that nuts? Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> mold actually only becomes a problem, though, if it's exposed to moisture. Okay. okay. But where do we live? In Houston. Yes. So... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys, you guys already know. Yeah. We said it. <laughs> <laughs> it's full of moisture here. <laughs> so here's the thing: we just talked about how just because you see mold and you think you got rid of it doesn't mean it's gone. Because a lot of times the mold is like deep into where you see it, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And that's because mold isn't just sitting on something; it's digesting it. Oh my god. It really is an alien. It is. It's it's digesting. digesting. It is digesting it. So when it is on your cabinets or your carpet or your wall, mold is actually eating it. Oh my god! What the? 
And that's how mold is spreading. It's eating and multiplying. Wow, what kind of monster is this? I know. <laughs> and so unchecked mold will eventually consume your structure and cause structural damage. Yeah, yeah for sure. I like sure, sure. Almost. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's when mold is inhaled that we start to get the side effects. Although like irrigate, you really shouldn't eat mold yeah, yeah unless it's yeah. like penicillin or cheese or something yeah yeah no, no but don't like, like don't link the mold on your cabinets no, no. Just, you, you will get you, you will, will start, start dancing, dancing. <laughs> yeah you start dancing so i have this fantastic um graph here yeah, yeah. and acs is gonna post it yeah. yeah so the relative of the humidity of houston depending on the time of year in the colder months we might sit between like 50 and 70, and in the warmer months, we might sit between 60 and 90. But look at this graph, ECs, and tell me, when is mold most common in humidity? With the 70s to 90. Yes. <laughs> Which is also where we happen to sit. Yep, yep, all the time. <laughs> so basically, Houston is a mold petri dish. Yes. Mold loves Houston. It's a mold playground here. It is a mold playground. If you live in a hot and humid environment, so if you live in New Orleans, if you live in Georgia, the Carolinas, Florida, um, any of those low-lying, swampy parts of Virginia yeah. areas, you are in mold heaven. And Houston is especially mold heaven because combined with the higher temperature it gets, with the higher humidity, the higher the mold. Yeah, and let me tell you guys, it is humid here. Yes, it, it is, is so humid. humid. It, it sucks for a person with curly hair like me. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> it sucks for a person with overactive sweat glands like me. Yeah. Yep. I'm actually wearing, I have these shirts that like soak up their sweat that you wear underneath. Oh. 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 I'm wearing, I'm wearing it. I might have to invest. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, I call it a sweat shirt. Nice. <laughs> it works, right? Um, but yeah, I have to wear it because I sweat so much. And it's, it's humid all the time. Yes. It's 75 degrees today, but still like 80% humidity. Yep. I mean, that still, actually makes it very, very warm. It, it, does. it, it does. does. It does not, not feel like 75, 75 degrees. It really doesn't. No. Your idea of 75 and our, our idea of 75, 75 are a lot different. Completely different. Completely different. So I'm going to talk about uh, other types of household mold. We talked about the Statue Boy. Yes. But there's a couple other ones you could find in your house. The Cladosporum is the green mold. So if you see green mold, it's probably a cladosporum. Um, although cladosporum can also be green, brown, gray, or black. What a dick. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, it can cause severe allergic reactions. It's very hard for people with, for people with asthma or weak immune systems. Cladosporum is actually most famous because it shows up on bread. Okay. So you can still okay. get it in your house. But if you've ever had moldy bread, you've seen it in class. One. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> for sure. Then we have the aspergillus. And I'm sorry if you are like a plant person and I'm saying this wrong. Yeah. yeah. We're not known for our pronunciation. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, we pronounce things wrong all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you should know. The aspergillus can be gray, brown, yellow, green, white, or black. Come on, guys. Yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're making it hard to differentiate. To differentiate. <laughs> it will cause infections with people uh, for people with weak immune systems, and it also produces a carcinogen, carcinogen, carcin mm. cancer causing <laughs> cause. I, I can't pronounce anything. No, okay. no, come back. Uh, let me let me like zoom in. Called aflatoxin. Aflatoxin. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. In no way related to aflac. Yeah, no. The no. aflatoxin. So the cool thing about the aspergillus is this is what's going to grow behind your walls and in your insulation. It also grows in soil. So if you ever have like a moldy plant or something. Oh, I see. Uh, aspergillus is really, really like humid, moist areas. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of times you're going to see an aspergillus in a bathroom. Oh, It's a good okay, place okay. to get an aspergillus. What about a penicillium? We know penicillium, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I'm allergic to penicillin, but if yeah. you've ever had strep throat, you've probably taken penicillin. Whenever, Whenever I got sick from my throat, they, they gave, gave you mold for your mold they sickness. They gave me a penicillin, penicillin shot. shot. So they gave you mold for your mold sickness. Yep. yep. That's amazing. Yep. That's a great it story. It worked. It actually worked. <laughs> That's a fantastic story. I love that. 
So penicillium can be green, white, or blue, and penicillium is the fuzzy mold. So oh, okay. it's fuzzy. Um, it also grows in walls and insulation. It will irritate the stomach if ingested in the wrong form. So don't scrape the penicillium off your wall and ingest it. Yeah, no. It <laughs> no. has to be, get it from your pharmacist if you want to eat penicillium, yes. please. Yes. Um, airborne penicillium can also cause congestion, coughing, and eye irritation. Then there is the alternaria. Alternaria is dark green, gray, or black. I mean, come on, guys. Like, why is... What's I point? know. What's these... the point of having a statue boy if you're all going to be black? Right. You know? That's what I'm saying. It's like they're, they're all different colors, but they all can be black. They can all be black. <laughs> I, except for the penicillium. Okay, yeah, yeah. But the alternaria uh, is gross, gross because it has long, velvety hair. Ew. Yeah, that's disgusting. Yeah, that's, no, that's nasty. Alternaria is what you find in carpets or clothing. Like if you have a flood and your clothing gets moldy, that's okay. going to be alternaria. Alternaria also grows around windows. Wow. Alternaria is going to cause respiratory problems, asthma, and hay fever. Then we have a statue. Boy. <laughs> and this is dark green or black, and it looks slimy. Ew. So a statue boy is not only going to be black, but it's going to be slimy black. Oh, oh God. God. Yeah. And a statue boy. Um, can be found around the walls, ceilings, or your floorboards. So in that um, beginning, the intro we listened, that was, they were finding statue boys in the walls and floorboards. Okay, yeah, yeah. Statue boys may cause cancer. Oh. <laughs> Headaches, asthma, dizziness, and joint pain. That's pretty, pretty intense. That's really intense. Then we have the memonelia which is dark green or black, but the difference between a statue boy and a memonalia is that a memonalia is very small spores. Okay. And they don't look as slimy as a statue boy. Okay. Uh, memonalia is a cotton canvas, wool ceilings in the walls, and it causes respiratory problems, headaches, and coughing. All right. So Interesting. That leads us to the question of these days, and we just kind of talked about this controversy with black mold. Is black mold really the worst thing? Is it really no, I think they're all pretty bad. <laughs> I agree. And actually, science kind of agrees, too. Remember I said black mold re releases mycotoxins. That's what yeah. they finally isolated as making the people in Russia sick. Okay. Um, and the, eventually the babies in Cleveland. Yeah. yeah. Um, and mycotoxin, as we mentioned, it's related to nosebleeds, hay fever, all this like crazy stuff. Yeah. yeah. But the fact of the matter is, as I just read to you, most mold causes these symptoms. Yeah. And how bad your reaction is depends on how allergic you are to mold. So we're all allergic to mold in some way, shape, or form yes. as human beings. It just depends how allergic you are. So for example, my husband Chris did not have as bad of a reaction after Hurricane Harvey as I did. Yeah. And so it really just depends on your immune system and your natural tolerance to mold. Okay. So, so is a statue boy gonna make, gonna make you sicker? If you're a baby, maybe. Yeah. yeah. But, if but if you're, you're an adult, adult probably, probably not gonna make you any sicker than any of those other types of mold. Yeah. Mold allergies are done by blood tests or skin prick tests, just the same thing as other allergy tests. And mold allergies are treated, again, like most allergies with an instruments and a histamine and shots. Now, mold exposure and reactions, this shouldn't come as a surprise after we just talked about it. I <laughs> know, yeah. They get they much worse in a hurricane or a high water. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Because all this mold is released all at once. Yeah. yeah. Mold loves water. And essentially, mold looks for two things to grow in your home, moisture and food. And the food is going to be that organic material in your house. So okay. Moisture. Mold just needs a little bit of moisture to start, which is why you see a lot of moisture, excuse me, a lot of mold in bathrooms. That's where you're most likely, or around washing, uh, washers and dryers. Yeah. Uh, poorly ventilated bathrooms, which is why you always want a vent fan in your bathroom, because that helps get the moisture out. That yeah. helps prevent the mold and the tile and the grout in the sink and in the shower. You've seen moldy showers before, right? Yes, no, so, not, not fun. Have you ever opened your bathroom cabinets and there's been like mold in the cabinets? Yes, no? yeah. Super commonplace. Um, you can also get molds from your roof leaking, from your HVAC leaking, from your plumbing leaking, high humidity and improper attic ventilation, 
or a high water event. Okay. Yes. Wow. Nice. I, I feel like we've really established the high water. I know. <laughs> mold food. Remember, mold is everywhere. Yes. It never leaves us alone for one minute. Yeah. So mold grows on almost every organic surface, except for us. Mold doesn't grow on us. Thank God. Unless we die. Yeah. Ew. Yeah. yeah no, we story. don't. That's another yeah. podcast. That's another <laughs> a whole different podcast. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to touch on that one. But paper, cloth, wood, insulation, clothing, material, all of which is in your house, yes. which means your mold is very, very happy if it gets moisture and food in the house because it's going to grow on your couch, it's going to grow on your carpet, it's going to grow in your wood floor, in your wood walls, in your wood cabinets. Mold has a lot of places to eat in your house. I'm going to be so paranoid <laughs> after this. I'm going to go home and eat some mold. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, insulate. Like sometimes you don't even see it because it's in your insulation. Right? Yeah, it's, it's just, just going, it's circling in your air. Yeah. You don't even know. It's climbing in your windows and snatching your people up. Yep. yep. <laughs> so, um, mold can also, this is interesting, mold can grow on concrete and glass and metal if there's an accumulation of dust or dirt on it because mold is in wow. air. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. crazy. I, I wouldn't think that it would get on glass. But if there's an accumulation of dust, that dust is what's becoming moldy. Wow. Yeah. That's, wow. that's nuts, isn't it? That is pretty nuts, yeah. So mold needs four factors. A temperature between 40 degrees and 100 degrees. Check. 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 Mold spores in the air. Check. Check. Food. Check. Moisture. Double, Double check. check. Yep. <laughs> and also, sometimes lack of sunlight also encourages the growth of mold because mold is like a vampire. Mold actually hates sunlight. Oh, okay. Wow, so, I didn't know that. Yeah. So that's why bathrooms are a very favorite place for mold because it's always dark there. it has tends to have a high temperature, high humidity, um, mold spores in the air, and food. Yeah. And very very little sunlight. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Climbing in your windows. Okay, so I'm gonna be saying that for a long time. Right? <laughs> um, remember the good Lord in Leviticus told us how to get a bit of mold, and I said that, that is exactly how you uh, that like like actual, actual mold remediation protocol. Yes. yes. In the state of Texas, a mold, a mold inspector, inspector is not a inspector. inspector. A mold inspector, a mold inspector is actually a different place. Yes, they they are separate. They are separate. And it's probably gonna be like that for most states, to be honest. I mean, mold, mold is a very specific, specific type of thing. Yeah, <laughs> it makes sense. I feel like you really need to know, know a lot about it. it. Yeah. And there's a difference between um, someone in, te in Texas, anyway. There's, yeah. there's a difference between someone who finds the mold and someone who treats the mold. It's actually two different licenses. Wow. Yeah, they're, they're really serious, serious about it. it. And, and they, they file, file, they, they file, file. What? They follow the exact, exact same, same protocol laid out in Leviticus. In fact, they're pretty surprised because this is Texas if they didn't just get it from Leviticus. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> there has to be a mold inspector. I know. And then the mold inspector writes up the clearance criteria, meaning what, it, what it's going to take for your house to be clear of mold. Yeah. And then, and then the whole remediation guy comes in and treats your house. house. And, then and then you have another inspection from oh. the mold assessor, assessor inspector, inspector, inspector to see if your mold, your house has been cleared to met the clearance criteria. And then you get a certificate. Wow. You know, I'm glad it's like that. I'm glad that they really made it detailed like that because you don't want nobody to butcher it. <laughs> no. You don't want them to be like, we cleaned it. It's it's still there. You know, you, nobody wants that. No, there's a there's a big but there. There's a big but. Yeah, for sure. And that but is what if you are a renter? And ECSU experienced this. Yes, yes. As a renter, what are your rights as a renter? And here's the thing. And again, this is the state of Texas. So I want you to check with your state. Okay. okay. In the state of Texas, outside of a real estate transaction, Homeowners and land and some landlords do don't have to hire mold professionals for assessment or remediation. Okay. So if in your own personal house, like my house, if I yeah. were to find mold and I wasn't selling the house, I, I actually would not, not have to hire, hire a mold professional. professional. Okay. But if, if I, I was selling the house, I would. Okay, I see. So if, so I, was, if, I, was, if I was just living, living in my house, house not selling, not selling it, it, I could I actually, actually take care of the mold myself. myself. If you okay. Yeah. I wouldn't have to worry about certificates or anything. And then when I go to sell the house, I wouldn't even have to tell anybody about it. Wow. Because yes. if you already took care of it yes. yourself. Okay. 
If it's in a real estate transaction and the home inspector calls out a mold like substance, because remember, home inspectors aren't allowed to say it's yeah. yeah, no. Then the mold inspector comes in, then they have to follow everything in the very end. Okay. okay. But if it's not a real estate, real estate transaction, you can do whatever you want. Wow. That's, That's crazy. crazy. Yes. Well, how about landlords? If you're a landlord with less than 10 units, so you own a really small apartment, home, like a duplex or triplex or yeah. quadruplex, it's less than 10 units, you don't have to hire a home. Oh my God. Yes. If it's more than 10 units, you have to hire the mold. Person. Okay, so if it was like a bigger apartment complex, like yours, like they mom. have to hire a mold. Person. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go searching. But this is what happened to your mom. If it's a residential home that's a Tennessee, they don't have to hire a mold professional unless the mold is over 25 continuous square feet. Oh my God. Which is really big. Yeah, that is really big. Yeah. And you know, I don't think they did do that. They did not hire, I think, I think they, they tried, tried to take care of it themselves and yeah. it did not work. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, if you're a landlord and you have less than 10 units, or if you have a residential property and the mold is less than 25 continuous square feet, you can take care of the problem yourself. And you can bet landlords are going to do that. Of course, you know, they want to they want to save money. Yeah. Which anybody would, you know, yeah. but it's people's lives. <laughs> it's people's safe. lives. People are inhaling those scratchy boys. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I want to talk to you real quick about the tools that are used in mold assessment. Oh. And mold assessment, I've been saying mold assessment, mold inspection. They're the same thing. Okay. So I'm sorry if anyone got confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're the same. They're the same. Yes. I want you to note, though, that a mold assessment uh, consultant, which is a fancy word for mold inspector, Ooh. they don't actually have to use these tools, but these tools, just like in home inspection, okay. you, you don't always have to yeah. use them. Yeah, just like we don't need an infrared camera or whatever. But we use it. Yeah, but we use it. enhances the inspection. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Same thing with these. So they could use a psychrometer. And that sounds intense. What is that? Yeah, it's not, it does sound what intense. What is a psychrometer? A psychrometer determines the relative humidity in the home. So it's kind of like a moisture meter. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. It kind of looks yeah. similar. A moisture meter is used when examining stucco to see how damp the stucco is. A psychrometer is used to determine the relative humidity in the house. Okay. Then we have what's called a Zephron bio pump. No relation to Zach. I was about to say Zephron. That. I was like, Zach Efron? A Zephron. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a combination of like his first name. Zach Efron, yeah. A Zephron biopump. It's used to collect air samples in the wall cavity. So sometimes, remember I said you can have mold in your insulation and yeah. you never know. They're, what they do is they're going to, they're not going to punch a hole in the wall. They're going to take out the outlet where okay. you can like, plug things in. Oh, okay, okay. And they're going to insert the Zephron biopump. And the Zephron biopump is going to test the air quality behind your wall. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yes. Then we have what's called um, a video camera. <laughs> and that's Ooh, cute. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> and that's just to kind of document what's happening. Okay, okay. cool. Um, a moisture meter, and that looks for moisture. Yeah, we know that. We know yeah. that. Thermal imaging camera is not going to find mold. Thermal. This is where people get confused. They get yeah. the thermal imaging camera and... Um, actually, we'll wait. We'll let you go back and listen to the thermal imaging. Yeah, yeah go, so go, go listen to the, the infrared episode. Yes, okay, we'll wait. Okay, you got it? I think, okay, 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 okay they got, got it, it. Got it. Got it. Good, good. All right, well, right. welcome back. Um, the, if you listen to that episode, you know that the thermal imaging camera or the infrared camera is not an imaging. It, it will not, not see you in your underwear, okay? No. You're, you're okay. <laughs> but it's also not gonna see through your walls. Yeah, no. And it's not gonna see mold either. No. But they're using the infrared camera for, and the mold inspection is to look for moist areas yeah. that might have mold. Yes. Yeah, so like any moist area, areas, that's where it's going to find. They're going to test those areas for mold. Yeah. 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 Sterile yeah. test tubes and test tape. Sometimes if they can't, like if you really need to figure out, is it stratchy boy, is it penicillium, what is okay. it? They're going to take a sample using tape, and they put the tape in a test tube, and they'll send it out to a lab. Ooh, so that's just if they're looking, looking for the specific. Because sometimes treatment, there's different treatment. Some, some, not every time. There's different treatment for different types of mold. And also, if you're involved in like a lawsuit, you need to know exactly what type of mold it is. And also, if you're having an allergic reaction, you need to know what type of mold it is. Too. Okay. So like, 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 like the intro, if they, they wanted to sue, they would have to. Yeah. The people yeah. in that story in the intro. Yeah, 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 yeah you yeah. just said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're good, you're good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know what it. I even heard you say that and then said it again. It's okay. It's okay. 
Um, they also use a vacuum in a mold assessment. I don't know. I guess that's just it's like gather samples. Like oh. you would use a scale vacuum oh. to vacuum up if it was like, um, oh, I forgot which one, which one was fuzzy? The fuzzy one, the fuzzy mold. You could vacuum it up. Yeah, I know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, and there's also what's called a smoke test. So the smoke, the smoke test, test is different from the Zac Efron biopump. Yeah. And the smoke test, what it does is it takes a sample of your mold outside mm -hmm. and then in the air. Okay. And then it takes a sample of the mold inside in the air. Remember mold of those with us. Yeah. yeah. If your mold inside registers higher than your mold outside, that means you have a mold problem, hypothetically. Okay. Okay. I'll say this, a lot of mold inspectors don't like the smoke test. Okay. It's not always because, yes, sometimes it's just smoke and mirrors. Okay. Yeah. So don't rely on this. Don't rely on But that is the purpose of it. They basically take a sample outside and take a sample inside and compare the two. Yeah. Yeah. But the problem is mold is always with us. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's, like, it's, it's just hard. It, there's no control variable. Yeah, yeah, for sure. sure. It's just really just comparison. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, mold is not, not something you want to play around with. Definitely, Definitely not. not. Definitely yeah. not. Mold is scary. scary. Mold is really, really scary. As, 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 as you could tell from the history, from the history <laughs> people went people through, went it, through it, it with mold. Yes. 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 People, 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 people like, like experienced. Experience. The best, which is cheese, and yes. the worst, which is hemorrhaging. Yeah. Um, so basically, I think this is a really good point to stop uh, because I think everyone's getting too freaked out. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Siri? No. My, oh my God, my Siri. <laughs> no, stop it, Siri. Siri. My, my Siri, Siri just like heard, heard me say hemorrhaging. Then said, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wonder if that got on the recording. I, uh, I'll have to go I hope away. you all heard my Siri apologize. So, but yeah, mold really runs the gamut from cheese to death. Yeah, it's really crazy. I didn't know. I did not know it was like blue cheese and in wine. And stuff you didn't like know that. blue cheese was mold? No, I did not know. I just knew blue cheese was gross. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so the other things ECs doesn't know is she's never seen Hocus Pocus. I don't know, guys. I'm sorry. And she's never seen Beetlejuice. No. I, Have I you ever seen Casper? That. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank God for that one. The friendly neighborhood ghost. That's right. So <laughs> Easy's has a lot of homework to do between now and October 31st. I know. Maybe, maybe we should just like just get a list going at this point. <laughs> That's true. I think we should. I think we've actually talked about that in a different, <laughs> yeah. a different episode. We have. We have. So I think mold is a great topic for spooky season. I, I agree. It, it's it's freaked me out. I I'm gonna go home and clean my house. <laughs> What's that SpongeBob meme when he's getting up? Which one? Where he's like, he like getting up from his chair. Oh, he's like, I, I'm a head up. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's good for me. That's what those people said in the intro. Yeah, they were like, I RB. <laughs> RB time. <laughs> so, you think it's time for credits? It's time for credits. Music credit is Kevin McLeod of Incomtech. Source credit is the Huffington Post and the Smithsonian Magazine. Now, before you say what the heck, Huffington Post. Um, it was actually an academic article, article someone wrote and then submitted to the Huffington Post, okay. which was the one about the 1994 flood um, on, in Cleveland. Okay, yeah. cool. So, yeah, don't, don't at me. Yeah, yeah don't, 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 don't get upset. upset. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, check us out on YouTube at A Action Home Inspection Group Houston, on Facebook, on Instagram at Home Inspector underscore Texas, and on TikTok at Houston Home Inspection. I want to say something real quick. Chris had to delete a video off of TikTok last night because we got 900 comments over it in like overnight. What? what? Yeah, and they were trolls. Like it was 900 like trolling comments. Oh, oh my God. God. No, show some empathy. People. I know. Jesus. So anyway, our next episode is phase one and phase two inspections. That's going to be, that's going to be fun. I feel like a lot of people, at least a lot of people I know, they have no idea. No, that you should oh my even gosh, yeah. Do this. I get so many questions. So all those questions and more will be answered. Yes. Meanwhile, I'm Mary. And I'm Isis. And we're the home girls. And we'll be at you next time. Talk about phases. Not a phase. No, it's not. It's not, not a phase. Not a phase. <laughs>